Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for clicking on me. Quinn O'Neill at the helm, ready to give you sports talk once a week, every week, but I mostly talk baseball. We'll talk about whatever on slow weeks, but there's always going to be a little bit of America's pastime. This is Quick Takes with Quinn. You're listening to Quick Takes with Quinn, the first episode of a series featuring all kinds of sports, not just me too. We've got a couple other people that are going to come on and do some different sports, and uh, I'm going to be talking primarily baseball though. Anyway, we're going to start off this first video, and I wanted to talk about my MVP picks for the 2017 MLB season. I've got two NL picks who I couldn't decide on. I'll probably, before the season starts, I'll get more into that, and I'll I'll come up with some definite picks. But for now, I'm going to give you one of my NL picks, and that is Mr. Bryce Harper. The 2015 MVP had a drop-off season in 2016. Now look, he had 24 home runs, a 441 slugging, and 86 RBI. Not a bad season, but this guy fell off a lot. A lot of people think he's not going to go back to that 2015 form, but I have a lot of faith in this guy. He's a hothead, sure, but he loves the game of baseball, and watching him play, he risks his body, does all he can to make every play. He's not like Yaziel Puig, who meanders his way over to fly ball and is always caught doing something stupid in the outfield, but I like Harper, okay? I'm a Red Sox fan, but I gotta show love for Mr. Bryce Harper. His average was 243. His on-base percentage was not that low, but those 24 home runs stick out a lot to me, and what really is the fact that he had a 319 isolated power. And if you don't know what isolated power is, I'll show it to you right now. So isolated power is a pretty simple stat. It's measured as a player's extra bases per at bat. Uh, it sounds a lot like slugging, but it just focuses on power. And it's calculated as slugging percentage minus average. So let's take a guy like Nelson Cruz. He obviously hits for power. Uh, 43 home runs in 2016. Uh, 287 average and 555 slugging percentage. How you would calculate isolated power, it would be 555 minus 287, and that comes out to, if you know basic math, 268. Meaning that per at bat, Nelson Cruz hits about 0.27 extra bases. That is isolated power. But however, in 2016, he had a 198 isolated power. And what gets me is the 18.7% strikeout rate. I think that'll go down. Listen, he had a 17.2% walk rate, which was the highest in the MLB. The guy knows how to get on base. The only thing that was lowering his on-base percentage was his average and his strikeout rate. If he keeps his hands steady and his eyes vigil, lower those K numbers and you've got an MVP right there. Next, I want to talk about uh, my other NL pick. That is Mr. Joey Votto. Coming off one of the, I mean, the best season of his career. Let's just get that straightforward right now. He had a 326 average, he had a 434 on base percentage, and, and a 550 slugging percentage. He had a 225 isolated power, one of my favorite stats. He had a K percentage of 17.6%, but that 16% walk rate kind of evens it all out. Uh, he hit 29 home runs, and defensively he was pretty terrible, but I think his offense sort of makes up for that. And, and don't overlook Joey Votto. He's got so much left in him. I know he's aging. He's turning 33. A lot of experts have him regressing a lot, but I have him being around the same player, minus a few stats. But you can't count this guy out. You can't count Joey Votto out. This guy had a fantastic season last year, and you can't just look at him and say, oh, he's going to go back to the player he used to be. Uh, well, I think this is the new Joey Votto. I think that this is what he is going to be for the rest of his career. I know he may not be as good as this, but he is going to be consistent until the day he retires. If he doesn't get MVP, you can be sure that he's going to finish in the top three in voting. By the way, all these stats are according to the fan graphs. Thanks, fan graphs. Now I'm going to talk about my AL MVP pick. Uh, I'm very excited for this guy, and a lot of people say, why are you picking this guy? Because I... <laughs> Personally, I love this guy, and if his team doesn't make the playoffs, then it means he didn't do good, but if this team makes the playoffs, or are fighting for a playoff spot, he is the reason why. 
and that is Mr. Kyle Seeger. He's overshadowed so much by Corey Seeger, it's crazy. Let's just talk about Corey Seeger for a second. Third in MVP, obvious rookie of the year, he was an all-star and a silver slugger. The guy is an animal, okay? But Kyle Seeger, don't sleep on him. 5.5 war in 2016. Kyle finished 12th in MVP voting in 2016. But Kyle had 5.5 war in 2016. He had a 359 on base percentage, a 500 slugging average, a K percentage of 16%. Corey Seeger had 20% and a walk percentage of 8. But Kyle had a walk percentage of 10. Looking at those stats alone, you can see that Kyle gets on base. Kyle knows how to play baseball. I think Kyle is the smarter baseball player. He's the more patient baseball player. Trust me. If you're predicting the Mariners to make the playoff, it's gonna be because Kyle Seeker. I know Felix Hernandez is still a great player, but offensively, you're gonna wanna look at Kyle Seeker, and I know Robbie Cano is there too, but I think Kyle Seeker is gonna have the better season. And I think he wins the AL MVP. Thank you for listening to my rant, and uh, we're going to have another one up next week. I just want to get that straight. My MVP picks, which I haven't decided for uh, in the NL, are Bryce Harper and Joey Votto, and my AL MVP, who I am taking right now, is Mr. Kyle Seeger. So thank you for listening. Be sure to tune in next week, and we'll try to get some more content opened up for you guys. Quick takes.